so many times when we're out talking with state specialists, we're usually in a test plot, and Josh, we're in a test plot of, of wheat, and you have actually been doing some tests on sorghum across the state. What kind of results have you seen from all of those? Yeah, well, I mean, we do a lot of stuff in a lot of crops throughout the year, Dave, and, and uh, our, our sorghum plots and, and our sorghum variety are probably one of the, the highlights we have in the, in the sorghum industry every year. And, uh, you know, we, we always get really good data. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it might not be as good a yields as we, we'd like to see, but it's, it's always good, good data. And, and that's exactly what we got last year. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those years to where you truly experience Oklahoma hardships between drought and the flooded conditions, early freezes, you know, late cool weather. The Southern Great Plains was really hit really bad this, this last year, but I think last year showed everybody how resilient our summer crops actually can be. And, and that's the reason why we have these wide testings. Uh, you know, our variety testings go throughout the state, really key regions. We try to hit various growing systems. That way, when we do have this and growers come to us with questions of, you know, what about in droughty periods, over wet, you know, sandy ground, clay ground, we have the answers to those. And, and for sorghum, they get those uh, a lot of times with the sorghum performance trial results, which just, just came out recently. Depending on what, what company uh, seed pin that you wear, there's, there's a really good option for Oklahoma and there's a really good option for a lot of growers in Oklahoma. That's probably the hallmark what to take away is, is no matter what you want to go with, um, talk to your local dealer because there's some really good yield options. For, for the producer that may not be familiar with sorghum, what are some of the high points of planting sorghum over the summer? Yeah, so on sorghum, the, one of the, the number one things um, we have to deal with on a year-to-year -year basis is sugarcane aphids. It definitely is something that we have to deal with or, or have to plan on every year because um, while they might not show up every year, if they do, they can be very, very negative. And so when, when we're talking about managing against sugarcane aphids, planting early is probably your best uh, situation for that. We'd like to see uh, temperatures warm up. Uh, critical soil temperature for sorghums is about 60 to be safe. Um, we do have hybrids that work okay at 58 and 55 degrees soil temperature. So if we're wanting to push the envelope, go in a little bit earlier, that way either A, we have a plenty of room to plant wheat following sorghum, or B, we wanna make sure we beat aphids in the, in the year. Um, growers have those options and, and we have that data available. The other thing is, is uh, pre-emergence herbicides, especially in a year like this, uh, to where we have some moisture coming out of the, the winter and we got some good soil moisture in the spring. And it seems like somewhere in the state about every Wednesday to Saturday, we're gonna get some rain here for the next several weeks. So with that kind of conditions coming through and with it being cool right now, burn down might not be a very great option right now. So we might get a little close to our sorghum planting windows and our corn planting windows. Make sure you get a good burn down down before and make sure you get a great pre-emergence option. All of our summer crops need that pre-emergence and, and make sure you have those down and, and available because our two biggest pests, like I said, sugarcane aphids and typically grassy weeds for our sorghum crop are what kind of hinder us. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Josh Lofton, cropping system specialist here at Oklahoma State University. And if you'd like to see the report that he talked about earlier on, go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.